when you get uh, when you get a pencil at the top of your sheet it says Jess can I have a look it says the church is God's what's that word up there in red in red people the church is God's people who are gathered gathering together so when you get your um, pencils fill that in at the top of your sheets there's a space there to fill that in because that's what the church is that's what God's church is so if we were going to look at building a church you can get bricks and timber to build a building but that's not a church if you don't have any people meeting together then you don't really have a church because if we're going to build a church, we need to build the people and get people to gather together. Now, where am I up to? It doesn't matter um, who you are. You can be young or you can be old. You can be a granny or you can be a baby. You can be a mum and dad or you can be a kid. All pe uh, people, the church is made up of people of all different types and sizes and ages. And when Titus was around, who we're reading about today, they didn't have buildings uh, to meet in. They probably meet in people's homes. They had churches in people's homes. And so Paul wants to help Titus to build a stronger church. And he's not talking about getting bricks and timber. He's talking about something very different. How do you build a church? Everyone look at verse 9 in chapter 1. Have a look at verse 9. This is going back in a little bit into last week's Bible reading. But in verse 9 in chapter 1 we see and it says about church leaders. How is a church leader going to build a church? It says he must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. So you're going to, how, are you going to, how are you going to build the church, Titus? He's got to hold on to the truth. The truth of Jesus' teaching that has been passed down by the disciples, by the apostles, and pass down to the people of the day. And he says, hold on to that truth firmly and don't let it go because that's what's going to help build the church and grow a healthy church. Hold on to the truth and then do two things with it. You've got to do two things with that truth. The first thing is to encourage others with sound doctrine. Encourage people with sound doctrine. What does that mean? Well, the word sound is sort of talking about something healthy. And doctrine means teaching. So you've got to encourage people with healthy teaching or with good teaching. Teaching the truth from God's word, teaching the truth from the Bible. That's how you build a church. You strengthen people by giving them good teaching from the Bible, good healthy teaching. Kids, if you want your bodies to grow healthy and strong, what sort of food are you going to eat? Vegetables, yeah? Fruit. You're going to eat good food, aren't you? Yeah, what are you going to eat? Yeah, that's the sort of food that you want to eat if you're going healthy and strong. Now, when I was a kid, my hero was Popeye the Sailor Man. Who knows Popeye the Sailor Man? Yeah, he's great. And Popeye used to grow big and strong muscles when he had a can of spinach. Now, the only problem was I didn't like spinach when I was a kid, so I never had big muscles like Popeye, did I? But... If you want to grow a healthy church, if you want to grow healthy bodies, you've got to eat healthy food. And the same with the church. If you want to grow a healthy church, you've got to give people healthy teaching. Feed them with healthy teaching. And that's, so that's the first thing we've got to do. We've got to encourage people with healthy teaching. The second part of that was, in that verse, was to refute those who oppose it. In other words, there are some people who are going to say, no. That's not the truth. Let me tell you what the truth is. No, don't listen to what Jesus said. Don't listen to what those apostles said. Let me tell you what's true. And Paul says you've got to refute them. In other words, you've got to argue against them and you've got to disprove them, prove, them that, that, prove that they're wrong. You've got to watch out for those people because they will destroy the church. Now, kids, there was a very clever man a long time ago, and I'm going to need your help with this one, there's a clever man who said a minister, a pastor, a church leader needs two voices. He needs one to call the sheep, to encourage people with good teaching, to call in God's sheep. And the second verse you need, a voice you need, is one that will scare off the wolves, those who want to destroy 
God's church to scare the wolves. So I want someone who's going to give me a voice that would be a voice that you would call the sheep with. Who wants to give me a calling the sheep voice? Who can call sheep? Todd, um, not Todd. Um, <laughs> it's gone, name's gone out of head now. Stand up. <laughs> that was great. Here, sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. That's a nice voice, isn't it? You, you, you're calling the sheep to come to you. What sort of voice would you use to scare off wolves? Anna, stand up. Go. <laughs> yeah. Who's got a scary voice to scare off the wolves? Yep, yeah, stand up now. Yeah, go on. Oh. You've got to use a scary voice to scare off the wolves, wouldn't you? Go away! Get out of here! We don't want you around here. So there's different voices, isn't there? One to call the sheep. Here, sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. Uh, or one to scare off the wolves. Give me a scary, scary voice. Yeah, that's all right. And so a minister, a pastor, someone who wants to build God's church, who wants to grow God's church, needs those two voices. One to encourage people and one to scare off those people who don't want God's, don't teach God's truth. Okay, so that's the first part of our sermon today is how to build the church. You need to hold to the truth and you need to feed people with the truth, uh, encouraging those, calling, the, calling God's sheep and scaring away the wolves, refuting the others. Now we've talked about how you build a church. How do you build a church? You feed the people, don't you? You strengthen the people by feeding them the truth that's great you feed the people you strengthen them by feeding them with truth so the next question is and this is what the rest of this part of Titus is talking about how can someone destroy a church how can someone destroy a church now if a church was a building with walls like um, this one here then how would you destroy a church thank you oh. Thank you. How would you destroy a church? You could get something like a big sledgehammer and destroy the church like that. So you could destroy a church with a sledgehammer or maybe you could get a chainsaw. Who wants me to start the chainsaw? Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. No. You get a chainsaw, you can cut the church apart with a chainsaw. Uh, there's lots of different ways. You could get a Miley Cyrus wrecking ball and, um, and put a big hole in the wall. Um, do you know, see that photo up on um, this side? When we were in New Zealand about five years or seven years ago, they just had a big earthquake and one of the churches in the middle of New Zealand, that's the church in the middle of Christchurch, was knocked down by the earthquake. You could destroy a church with an earthquake or with... A, press the button for me, a fire. And I've, I know a, a, a friend of mine who was a minister at a church and his church burnt down in a fire. Oh, yeah. these, these aren't suggestions, by the way, okay? Uh, or um, a flood. Do you know, in 1955, if you were sitting here in 1955, your feet would have been getting wet because in 1955, this church, this building, was full of water from a flood. How cool is that? Yeah. It's true. You would have been sitting in a big puddle of water in 1955. Now, if the church was a building, you could destroy the church with a flood, with a fire, with a wrecking ball, with an earthquake, with a, with a chainsaw, with a sledgehammer. But if the church is people, how can someone destroy a church? Let's have a look at the next verse in verse chapter, Titus chapter 1, verse 10. He says, you've got to teach people the truth. Why? In verse 10, for there are many rebellious people, mere talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision group. They must be silenced because they are ruining whole households by teaching things they ought not to teach and that for the sake of dishonest gain. 
How do you destroy? How can someone destroy a church? Yeah, by telling them lies. Now, on your sheet, you've got a, spa a space to fill in that. How can someone destroy a church by spreading poisonous lies? Because uh, Paul says you've got to watch out for these people. They're deceivers. Someone who deceives you tells you a lie, and they want you to believe the lie instead of believing the truth. He says they're talkers. They talk a lot and they like the sound of their own voice, but they're not really saying anything that's worth listening to because they're not teaching you God's truth. They're only teaching you what they want to say and what they think you want to hear. And instead of feeding the people the healthy truth, they're spreading poisonous lies. And what happens when you eat poison? You get sick and, and you die, don't you? So that's how you destroy a church, by feeding people with poisonous lies. Now, Brian Hearn is here today, and I was going to tell this story about Brian a few years ago. Brian went out his front yard and he thought, oh, there's some nice mushrooms. And he ate some of those mushrooms out of his front yard, and he got very, very sick because they were poisonous mushrooms. He didn't die. No, he's still here today. He's sitting at the back there. But he ate the wrong sort of mushrooms, the poisonous ones, and it made him very, very sick. Now, Paul says to Titus, there are people who want to deceive you and spread lies. So you've got to watch out for those people. In fact, you've got to silence them. Tell them to keep quiet because it's no use people teaching people things that are lies. It's only going to lead them away from God and it's going to weaken their faith and it's going to make them, uh, make them weak in the faith. But Titus has a hard job. Because look in verse 12. Titus has a very hard job because look at what the people are like in Crete where he is. It says, even one of their own prophets has said, Cretans are always liars, evil brutes, and lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. So the people where, um, where Titus lived and where Titus was working were very difficult people because a lot of them liked the lies. They liked all those uh, things that were wrong. Can you have the next picture for me? I came across a lady during the week who was spreading some poisonous lies. Um, and unfortunately, she's a very influential lady. But she was saying things like, God's word has power and you're like God, so your words have power too. And she said, you can say to your bank account or to your checkbook, you can say, checkbook, hear the word of the Lord. You are not going to stay empty. Now, does that sound like one of God's promises in the Bible? doesn't, does it? She was saying, spreading uh, lies, poisonous lies that might lead people away from the truth. And when you find people like this, what does verse 13 say you've got to do? Therefore, rebuke them sharply. Rebuke them sharply. What does that mean? What does it mean to rebuke someone? Well, it could be to silence them or tell them to stop. Stop what you're doing. And don't do it anymore. Now, you might think, well, how could I tell someone else to stop what they're doing? Show us the next picture. Oh, try the next one. No? Okay. <laughs> I had thought I had a picture of a bridge there. Uh, does that come a bit later on? No? Okay. Uh, back in 1975, if someone, if just say you were driving down the road and some crazy looking person, came running down the road towards you, waving their arms and going, stop, stop. Do you think you'd stop for them? If they're a crazy looking person, I don't think I'd stop for them because you'd think, oh, I don't know what this person wants to do to me. Maybe, they've got some, maybe they're have got maybe trying to cause trouble or something. But in 1975 in Tasmania, there was a man who was running down the road uh, off, on a bridge and he was running towards cars and he was saying, stop, stop. And some cars stopped, but some cars drove past him. But the problem was a big section of that bridge had collapsed. And when the cars drove past him, they drove off the edge of the bridge and down, 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 down into the water. And they died. And so they should have listened to that man who was saying stop. Because when he was saying stop, he wasn't trying to just spoil their fun, was he? 
He was trying to rescue them. And so when Titus, uh, Paul says to Titus, he says, rebuke them sharply. Tell them to stop because if you do that, you're going to rescue them. You're going to rescue them. See, it says rebuke them sharply so that they will be sound in the faith. Now that word sound means healthy. And so they're going to have healthy faith. They're going to grow up to be strong Christians. If you tell them to stop doing the wrong thing, then that's good for them. So we should tell people to stop when they're doing the wrong thing, even though you might think, well, how could I tell someone to stop? It's good to tell them to stop if they're going the wrong way. Because man-made ideas and poisonous lies are going to destroy the church because it will weaken people's faith. And we don't want that to happen. So Paul says to Titus, you've got to stop them. You've got to watch out for those who want to demolish the church. Now, how do you know what they, what they look like? Look in verse 16. How do you know what they look like, these people who want to destroy the church? It gives us a clue. It says they claim to know God, but by their actions they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. So they say, yeah, we know what God's all about, but they don't really show it in the way they live. They say, yeah, I'm one of God's people, but then their actions don't match their words. And so you can tell people who are spreading poisonous lies by looking at their lives and seeing if their actions match the truth of God's word. So that's how someone can destroy a church, by spreading poisonous lies. But let's look at the very first verse of chapter 2, and this is Paul's final words to Titus. And he says, You must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. In other words, feed each other the healthy truth of the church. Feed them with the truth. How do we grow a strong, healthy church? You've got to know the truth. You've got to hold firmly to the truth. And you've got to feed other people with the truth. That's how we're going to grow a healthy church here in Narrabri. We can build, a, you could build a big building, a big fancy looking building, but that's not building God's church. Building God's church is strengthening people with the truth. And that's what we're to do. So how can you do that? How can you do that as kids? How can you be healthy and help to build a healthy church? We've got to learn from Jesus, don't we? Learn Jesus' teaching as it's written in the Bible for us. And you do that by reading the Bible with your mum and dad, by coming to Sunday school and reading the Bible together, by going to youth group, all those sorts of things. You've got to know the truth. You've got to learn the truth from Jesus. And when you do that, God's Spirit will help you to recognize the difference between healthy truth and poisonous lies. And then you'll be able to work out which one to listen to and which one to reject. God's Spirit, read the Bible. God's Spirit will help you to tell the difference between healthy truth and poisonous lies. But as you learn the truth, kids, mums and dads, grannies and grandparents, our actions have to match what we say we believe. Because if our actions don't match what we believe, then we're not really useful for anything, are we? And we're not going to help build God's church strong. So one way of growing healthy is to remember God's word, to memorize it, to get it into your heads. And that's one thing we're doing at the moment in this next six weeks. We are learning some verses from Titus chapter 2. And I think I was supposed to have these on the screen, but I don't have them on the screen, do I? At the very start. Let's go back to the very start. And that first sentence is the one we're learning today. We're going to learn six different sentences over six weeks. And by the end of six weeks, you're going to know all of that off by heart. Can you believe that? You're going to know all that off by heart if you learn one sentence each week. The first sentence this week says, let's read it together. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Okay, close your eyes. Try and remember what it said. Okay, open your eyes and have another look. Did you get it right? For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Okay, just blank that out for me, Sammy, so we can't see it. 
Okay, are we ready? After three. One, two, three. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Get that into your head. Because if you get that into your head, you're learning the truth, you're growing healthy as a Christian, and you're learning to follow Jesus. The grace, oh, let's say it again. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Now, if you come and see me at morning tea and you can tell me those words without looking at them, then um, I might pat you on the back or something like that. <laughs> okay? Right yeah. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that uh, you help us to know what the difference is between healthy truth and poisonous lies. Father, we thank you uh, that we can all play a part in building your church to be healthy and strong by focusing on the healthy truth and by getting rid of the poisonous lies. And Father, I pray that you'd help us to know your word, to hold firmly to the truth that you've given us, that we'd hold firmly to it so that we can encourage each other and that we can refute anyone who wants to argue against it. And Father, please help us to grow strong and firm in the truth. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.